These prophetic words come from a variety of sources. Please take every word before the Lord for confirmation. G'day, I'm Rachel Milligan and this is First Fruit Taz. Please excuse my voice, it sounds terrible, but I'm actually on the mend. So thank you so much for your prayers, everybody. Um, I would suggest that you pause this right now and grab a cuppa because there's a lot for me to cover in this video. One of the things is a piece of art that I was putting away. I had to come up with a storage solution because I'm starting to generate a lot of art with Holy Spirit. And there was a piece that I came up with um, a year ago and I was just really starting out with drawing with Holy Spirit at that stage. And as you've seen with some of my other videos, when I draw with Holy Spirit, often the art can go on as um, what seems to be random lines for a long time before it suddenly pulls together at the last minute. And so when I started this particular piece of art, I'd said to God, please, can you give me something instantly recognisable because I felt the need at that time to be very um, motivated. And so as you'll see, what I received was instantly recognisable and it wasn't actually named until on the 10th of July when I was putting this art with the newer pieces of art and I received the water carrier. Now there were several things that came to mind at that point. What came to mind for me immediately was the Holy Spirit as the living water um, and then the other scriptural references that came to mind were the search for Isaac's wife Rebecca who was a water carrier and uh, the Samaritan woman who was a water carrier. Now the scripture and the revelation around the art really grew so I'm going to share another word with you and then I'll finish off with that revelation and scripture. I'm seeing a lot of rainbows at the moment and I really feel like God is saying to us, hold on, the promise is there. I haven't forgotten this promise that I've made to you. It will all happen in my perfect timing. Keep your eyes on me. Prepare during this time of rest and waiting. I have not forgotten my promise to you. Yesterday afternoon I arrived at the beach to walk the dog and straight away it struck me the bre breakers have arrived. The breakers at the beach were bigger than usual. Um, look really I don't think it was that significant in the natural but I definitely felt it in the spiritual. The breakers have arrived and I certainly have received what seems to be a very big blessing in the last 48 hours and for my whole family um, those of us who are believers seem to be just having blessing after blessing and the blessings are snowballing they're getting bigger um, and yes those are snow clouds obliterating the mountain in the distance there so back to the water carrier I actually lost my notes I've had a really big week because one of my children was blessed with um, being selected for and being sponsored for a special youth choir that was participating in a festival this week so that meant a lot of running around you might be interested to know that she actually had the opportunity to perform with the Boston Children's Choir as part of that experience which was a real blessing for my daughter Anyhow, so really busy week and not 100% well and I'd misplaced the notes that I'd been making and so I went on the internet to recover the notes that I'd made. The first thing that came up in my search was actually transchristians.org on the internet and obviously as a new Christian... <laughs> I'm going out in obedience here, okay? I wouldn't be raising transgender as a topic without being required to as an act of obedience. Let's just put it that way. Um, absolutely not going to put any of my experience or my um, opinion out there. But I thought that since this has come up, I can't 
ignore it out of obedience so what I am going to do is just read this article so I'm going to share now the article on um, transchristians.org and again if you're uncomfortable about this curious about this do I have an agenda no I do not have an agenda around transgender um, I suppose the one thing that I can share is a strong message that God has repeatedly been giving to me and that is that the churches need to honour the trial and tribulation, the fire that new Christians and newcomers have been through. Um, so I'll leave that as that. Just be careful how you interpret what I've just said. So here's the article. Water Carrier and Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I am to eat the Passover with my dis disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. This was Mark 14, 13 to 16, RSV. The author of this article goes on to say, Many characters in the Bible come alive as our spiritual ancestors, and as my friend George suggested, as our transcestors. And as the heart of it all, and at the heart of it all, you can find a gender variant water carrier who finds the upper room for the Last Supper. The disciples were asked by Jesus to look for a male water carrier. This seemingly insignificant fact has transformed the heart of my faith. Water carrying was traditionally a job done by women, so a male water carrier would be easy to spot in the crowds by the well on the day in Jerusalem at Passover. In the throng the disciples looked for a male water carrier. This is amazing in and of itself. But then take a moment to think why this man might be a water carrier, why he might have a traditional female job. Could he have chosen this job because he felt more comfortable with a female role? Perhaps he identified himself as female, or perhaps he used to identify himself as female but now lives as male. Just maybe the water carrier is a transgender person right at the heart of the story which we do not even notice. Could he be a male to female person or a female to male person or an intersex person? It is speculative but it is also not beyond the bounds of possibilities that this is one of our spiritual ancestors. Someone Jesus trusted enough to find them a place to gather at this busy time, that very time when what is now communion was instigated by body and the blood, that most intimate of meals that brings us into the most intimate communion with Jesus. It is our bodies that bring us into communion with each other. I'm absolutely not going to comment on that article. That's not for me. And um, we can only pray, I suppose, that God guide us as to um, why he would place this article before us. And it might be for different reasons for different people. And again, I would simply urge people to be prepared to honour the fire and tribulation that people have been through as part of their process of coming to faith in this time that is definitely a strong and frequently given word of God currently. Interestingly, as I was going through my notes to finish off this video, I was given scripture, Hebrews 4-7, which I had here and I've just, just lost it. So this is Hebrews 4, 7 from the NLT, which I just received to add to this video. So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. So very interesting that that was added to this video. This is the piece of art that I did about a year ago. Drawing with Holy Spirit is um, its a learning process. You learn a lot about walking with God as you draw with Holy Spirit. You get taught things like to be patient, not to assume, not to trust what you see in the natural because what's happening in spirit might be quite different. Um, the list goes on and on and if you have not tried 
drawing with Holy Spirit, I thoroughly encourage that you do. So this piece of work I did about a year ago and I prayed to God, please give me something that's instantly recognisable, which was probably an immature request, um, but I just felt the need to be very motivated and I knew that seeing something manifest quickly would motivate me. I was very young in my walk with the Lord and I have a lot more patience these days, praise God. So he gave me this and it wasn't until a couple of days ago, it was on the 11th that I was putting the art into a storage space and I understood that God's name for this piece is the water carrier. I asked for a word to go with it. The water carrier in this case is Jesus, for it is he, the restoration of mankind as a spiritual entity, a willing vessel yet to be broken from earthly treasures and realigned with my overarching intention. For your life is blessed in good timing by the one. My will is to manifest by the great machinations of little children. In you lies the key to restoration. Have faith in abundance. It will unlock doors by faith in my word, my promises. Blessed be reprise, the only one to wait, and open every gate, when my love turns in to you so true, this love's embrace, a holy water overflowing, in spirit my like hewn, once withered and dejected, now risen again so soon, to leave the best and dance again, for joy did bring abundantly the peace that beckons. The flow of life, once forgotten, cast aside, a fool's dream, now once again picked up, lifted high, declared and decreed, this one is for me. It's through Jesus that we have access to the Holy Spirit. And as I was looking into scripture around that, I found a couple of gems I want to share. Matthew 12, 32 NLT Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. Which really just highlights the importance of sitting and listening to the Holy Spirit, to allowing Holy Spirit to minister to you and then being obedient to Holy Spirit. John 3.6 NLT Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. I just thought that those two scriptures were absolute gems, something really, really important for us to, to chew over, I suppose. So I'm going to finish by reading the scriptures that came to mind to me. So I'll finish, I suppose, with, with perhaps the obvious Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So we left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sichar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. 
Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, What do you want with her? or Why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, Wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another harvests, and it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Father, I pray that you give us revelation and understanding, that you soften our hearts and help us to receive the message that you intend us to receive through this scripture. In the name of Jesus, I amen. So this is a scripture that immediately came to mind for me. A wife for Isaac. This is Genesis 24 in the NLT. <clears throat> Please excuse my voice. A wife for Isaac. Abraham was now a very old man, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. I'm going to have a lozenge. A wife for Isaac. Abraham was now a very old man, And the Lord had blessed him in every way. One day Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of his household, Take an oath by putting your hand under my thigh. Swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my homeland, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son Isaac. The servant asked, But what if I can't find a young woman who is willing to travel so far from home? Should I then take Isaac there to live among your relatives in the land you came from? No, Abraham responded. Be careful never to take my son there. For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. If she is unwilling to come back with you, then you are free from this oath of mine, but under no circumstances are you to take my son there. So the servant took an oath by putting his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham. He swore to follow Abraham's instructions. Then he loaded ten of Abraham's camels with all all kinds of expensive gifts from, from his master, and he travelled to distant Aram Naharaim. There he went to the town where Abraham's brother Nahor had settled. He made the camels kneel beside a well just outside the town. It was evening and the women were coming out to draw water. 
O Lord, God of my master Abraham, he prayed, please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here beside this spring and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too, let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. Before he had finished praying, he saw a young woman named Rebecca coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, who was the son of Abraham's brother Nahor and his wife Milka. Rebecca was very beautiful and old enough to be married, but she was still a virgin. She went down to the spring, filled her jug and came up again. Running over to her, the servant said, "'Please give me a little drink of water from your jug.' "'Yes, my lord,' she answered, "'have a drink.' And she quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and gave him a drink. When she had given him a drink, she said, "'I'll draw water for your camels, too, until they have had enough to drink.' So she quickly emptied her jug into the watering trough and ran back to the well to draw water for all his camels. The servant watched her in silence, wondering whether or not the lord had given him success in his mission." Then at last, when the camels had finished drinking, he took out a gold ring for her nose and two large gold bracelets for her wrists. "'Whose daughters are you?' he asked. "'And please tell me, would your father have any room to put us up for the night?' "'I am the daughter of Bethuel,' she replied. "'My grandparents are Nahor and Milka. "'Yes, we have plenty of straw and feed for the camels, and we have room for guests.' The man bowed low. The man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, he said. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master, for he has led me straight to my master's relatives. The young woman ran home to tell her family everything that had happened. Now Rebecca had a brother named Laban, who ran out to meet the man at the spring. He had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists and had heard Rebecca tell what the man had said. So he rushed out to the spring where the man was still standing beside his camels. Laban said to him, Come and stay with us, you who are blessed by the Lord. Why are you standing here outside the town, when I have a room all ready for you and a place prepared for the camels? So the man went home with Laban, and Laban unloaded the camels, gave him straw for their bedding, fed them, and provided water for the man and the camel drivers to wash their feet. Then food was served, but Abraham's servants said, I don't want to eat until I have told you why I have come. All right, Laban said, tell us. I am Abraham's servant, he explained, and the Lord has greatly blessed my master. He has become a wealthy man. The Lord has given him flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, a fortune in silver and gold, and many male and female servants and camels and donkeys. When Sarah, my master's wife, was very old, she gave birth to my master's son, and my master has given him everything he owns, and my master made me take an oath. He said, Do not allow my son to marry one of these local Canaanite women. Go instead to my father's house, to my relatives, and find a wife there for my son. But I said to my master, What if I can't find a young woman who is willing to go back with me? He responded, The Lord, in whose presence I have lived, will send his angel with you and will make your mission successful. Yes, you must find a wife for my son from among my relatives, from my father's family. Then you will have fulfilled your obligation. But if you go to my relatives and they refuse to let her go with you, you will be free from my oath. So today, today when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer. O oh Lord, God of my master, Abraham, please give me success on this mission. See, I am standing here beside this spring. This is my request. When a young woman comes to draw water, I will say to her, Please give me a little drink of water from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink, and I will draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected to be the wife of my master's son. Before I had finished praying in my heart, I saw Rebecca coming out with her water jug on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water, so I said to her, Please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jug from her shoulder and said, Yes, have a drink, and I will water your camels too. So I drank, and then she watered the camels. Then I asked, Whose daughter are you? She replied, I am the daughter of Bethuel, and my grandparents are Nahor and Milka. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrists. Then I bowed low and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, because he had led me straight to my master's niece to be his son's wife. 
So tell me, will you or won't you show unfailing love and faithfulness to my master? Please tell me yes or no, and then I'll know what to do next. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The Lord has obviously brought you here, so there is nothing we can say. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go. Yes, let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard their answer, he bowed down to the ground and worshipped the Lord. Then he brought out silver and gold jewellery and clothing and presented them to Rebecca. He also gave expensive presents to her brother and mother. Then they ate their meal, and the servant and the men with him stayed there overnight. But early the next morning Abraham's servant said, "'Send me back to my master.' "'But we want Rebecca to stay with us at least ten days,' her brother and mother said. "'Then she can go.' But he said, "'Don't delay me. The Lord has made my mission successful. "'Now send me back so I can return my ma- to my master.' "'Well,' they said, "'we'll call Rebecca and ask her what she thinks.' "'So they called Rebecca. "'Are you willing to go with this man?' they asked her. "'And she replied, "'Yes, I will go.' "'So they said goodbye to Rebecca "'and sent her away with Abraham's servant and his men. "'The woman who had been Rebecca's child nurse "'went along with her. "'They gave her this blessing as she parted. "'Our sister, may you become the mother of many millions. "'May your descendants be strong "'and conquer the cities of their enemies.' Then Rebekah and her servant girls mounted the camels and followed the man. So Abraham's servant took Rebekah and went on his way. Meanwhile, Isaac, whose home was in the Negev, had returned from Beer Lahai Roy. One evening, as he was walking and meditating in the fields, he looked up and saw the camels coming. When Rebekah looked up and saw Isaac, she quickly dismounted from her camel. "'Who is that man walking through the fields to meet us?' she asked the servant. And he replied, "'It is my master.' So Rebekah covered her face with her veil. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done. And Isaac brought Rebekah into his mother Sarah's tent, and she became his wife. He loved her deeply, and she was a special comfort to him after the death of his mother. This too is the word of the Lord. Holy Father, once again I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you give us understanding and revelation around this scripture. Okay, guys, if you're still with me, then well done. (laughs) And I'm just going to finish with a little prayer. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray thank you for providing the scriptures that we may grow in our understanding, our faith and our walk with you. If we do not have a promise, I pray that you give us revelation and a promise over our life. I pray, Lord, that you build our faith, give us strong faith as we steward in those promises. And I pray, Lord, that you give us patience and wisdom as to how best to prepare for the manifestation of the promises that you have given over our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I hope this video blesses you. Have a great day. Holy Father, I thank you for placing this video before those you intend to receive it. If this video blessed you, be sure to share, like and subscribe. Financial support is welcome and donations can be made by selecting the link in the details box below this video.